So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Good morning, friends and family of One Family Church, guests, uh, welcome to you. Welcome to our brothers from Stepping Into the Light Ministries. We're so glad that you are with us this morning. Today I want to speak to you from the very bottom of my heart. I, I, I wanted to speak to you from this location because this location represents where we are as a culture, as a people, as a nation right now. We are in a broken place. We are in a wrecked place place. Uh, we are in a place of, of grief and anger. We're in a place, in some cases, of confusion and even despair. As everyone knows by now, George Floyd was murdered on May 25th by someone who was tasked with the, the job of serving and protecting him. And that murder set off shockwaves throughout the world, shockwaves throughout our culture. And it, tri it triggered a number of peaceful protests as well as violent uh, riots and outbreaks, which culminated this week in another tragedy here in St. Louis, the murder of uh, retired police captain David Dorn. The world is truly upside down. And so people of God are asking the question, what do we do? How do we change this? How do we bend the arc of history from where we are, which is a place of grief and despair, tragedy, violence, and, and, and strife, to the vision that Christ has for his world, which is a place of unity and love and, and brotherhood. How do we become part of that transformation? Today, I wanna to share with you a message from, from the heart of God's word. I wanna share a message of hope, a message of encouragement, a message to inspire you, and a message to empower you. I wanna take you on a journey this morning, a journey that I'm calling the road to reconciliation.
the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the Corinthians, the context in which he wrote the letter was not that different than the context that we're in today. In the ancient world, there was violence and hatred and bloodshed and bigotry and all of the kinds of turmoil and, and, and horror that we actually see in our world today. In fact, the Apostle Paul himself had been unjustly incarcerated. He had been beaten. He had been stoned. He had been left for dead. And yet, rather than despair, rather than to fall into uh, 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 just the pit, he began to pin a way forward. He began to draft a template, a road towards reconciliation. And in verse 20 of chapter 5 of the letter, he says, we implore you, we beg you, be reconciled to Christ. Well, what he means by that is we cannot give help that we haven't received ourselves. We cannot give love that we have not received ourselves. We cannot give justice and, and, and pro produce mercy and grace. If we haven't received it ourselves, he's begging us, be reconciled to God. It's a personal, it's a personal request. He's begging. The, the scripture actually means, it, it, the, the word implore, he, he's literally begging, be reconciled to God through Christ. So step one on the road to reconciliation is simply receive the help that you long to give. You've got to receive it for yourself. You have to recognize your need. You have to recognize the, the depravity of your own soul. You have to recognize the seeds. We have to recognize the seeds of bitterness and anger and, and, and bias and, and hurt in our own life. So those can be rooted out, they can be reconciled, they can be placed upon the shoulders of Jesus and our sin can be taken on His shoulders and His righteousness can be imputed to us. The other day I, I, heard, I heard a blood-curdling scream come from my son's room. It was my daughter's voice but it was coming from my son's room. I jumped up, I ran into the room and I saw my four-year-old daughter Eden. She had been up in the second bunk uh, of her brother's bed and apparently tried to climb down and ended up hanging by her fingers, dangling over the edge of the bed, desperately <laughs> wanting help. Now Eden hates to ask for help. She never asks for help. She always wants to do things her own way. But in this moment, she couldn't pull herself back up on the bed, and yet if she let go, she would fall to the ground and hurt herself. And so she did the one thing that she hates to do. She cried for help. And as her father, of course, I, I went in and I, and I pulled her off the bed. I did the one thing that I could do for her that she couldn't do for herself, is I saved her from falling. Today, be reconciled to God as step one on the road to reconciliation means cry out for help. Cry out to God to be changed, to be transformed. Some of us have been Christians for a long time. We've been professing Jesus for a long time, but we're not experiencing the love of God in our heart. We're not experiencing the love of Christ in our souls. We're not experiencing the peace of God that passes understanding. We're, we're, we're angry and we're, we're hurting and we're, we're confused. The only thing we can do in this moment, in this moment of anger, in this moment of fear, in this moment of confusion, in this moment of uncertainty, is to cry out for help and say, God, I need to be reconciled to you. I need you to open my heart and, and see what's in there. Take out some of my bitterness and my, my bias and my anger and my, my, my rage and, and, and fill me with your presence. Fill me with your, with your knowledge. Fill me with your grace so that I can be an agent of reconciliation myself. Let God reach out and pull you from that desperate state that you can't save yourself from and let him hold you in his arms and let him pull you close. Because the ver first step on the road to reconciliation is to receive the help that you long to give.
For many people, that moment of reconciliation, that moment of personal salvation, can become for them in their mind the finish line of their faith. Like they crossed the line, they gave their heart to the Lord, and now we're done, let's pack up and go home. But that's not how the Apostle Paul describes it. He describes it as the starting line to your faith. In fact, he says that once we have been reconciled to God, we begin to see ourselves and other people differently. He says uh, in, in that same passage, he says, uh, so now we don't see anyone from a worldly point of view. If anyone, he says, is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old is gone and the new is here. In other words, we, we begin to see each other and ourselves as one in Christ. Step two on the road to reconciliation is what I'm calling unite and conquer. Unite and conquer. For eons, generals and military leaders have used a, a strategy that was coined by Julius Caesar called divide and conquer. In his book, Machiavelli, uh, his book, The Art of War, Machiavelli describes uh, divide and conquer as saying, what you have to do is you have to divide your enemy, you have to make your enemy suspicious of one another so that they'll be more easily defeated. The enemy of our souls has been using this strategy for all time, since our earliest ancestors, we have been believing a false dichotomy about ourselves. We have embraced a false paradigm where we see other people as somehow fundamentally different from ourselves. And we bought it hook, line, and sinker. We've been hoodwinked into seeing ourselves always in binary terms, black, white, uh, 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 protesters, police, uh, Democrats, Republicans, liberals, conservatives, list goes on. And this is a false paradigm. This does not describe who we really are, fundamentally at our core. This is, at the base of it, a false dynamic. It's, the, it's, it's, it's an enemy's ploy to separate us from one another, to see each other fundamentally as different from one another. If we really want to walk down the road to reconciliation, we have to be transformed in our minds. We have to view things the way God views things. We have to employ God's strategy of unite and conquer. As described in uh, Galatians by the Apostle Paul, he says, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither male nor female. There is, is neither slave nor free, for you are all one, he says, in Christ Jesus. If we want to walk down this road to reconciliation, we have to fundamentally transform the way we understand ourselves and other people. We have to reject uh, the, the paradigm of the enemy of divide and conquer. It doesn't mean that we're actually trying to defeat another person. We're not fighting against each other. We're fighting together against the common enemy of evil and injustice. In fact, the Apostle Paul put it like this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and against rulers of darkness in this world. There's a spiritual battle we are fighting. And the, and the battle we are fighting is against evil and we're fighting it together, collectively, as one. If we're gonna win this battle, if we're gonna walk down this road to reconciliation, we have to embrace, affirm, and employ Christ's strategy for our life, which is unite and conquer. After we've been reconciled to God ourselves, reconciled to Him, had our sins forgiven, been embraced by His love, been affirmed by His love, given our sins to Him, taken on His righteousness, and after we have embraced our new identity, our new perspective, that we are no longer divided, we are no longer seeing ourselves through the lens of binary categories, but we are in fact one. There is neither Jew nor Greek, male nor female. Uh, slave nor free. When we begin to see ourselves as one, we've been reconciled, then and only then can we get to step number three. In verses 19 and 20 of this passage, 
the Apostle Paul says, God has committed us to the ministry of reconciliation. And then he says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. That's what we are. That's who we are. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. Um, imagine that. Like understand that for a minute. God is making his appeal to the world through you and through me. That means he has commissioned us. He has authorized us to be his ambassadors, to be his arbiters of justice, his arbiters of peace, to be his vanguard of truth and love and grace on the planet. So step number three on the road to reconciliation is commit to the cause. times like these where we're in a moment, a cultural moment where there is a national tragedy, a lot of times people long to do something. They, they, a passion, a zeal rises up within them to make a difference, to be a part of the change. It's like a little uh, ember that, that catches fire in their chest and they, and they, and they want to do something. They, they, they want to participate. Uh, but a lot of times what happens is a few weeks, a few months, later, um, the passion dies out. The ember begins to fade. Today, I want to challenge you. I want to encourage you. I want to implore you. I beg you, do not let the fire die out. Put some tinder on that fire. Put some, some kindling on that fire. Blow onto that ember and let it rise up and heat your soul and consume your heart because we are called to be ambassadors for Christ. That's our calling, that's our mission. Commit yourself to the cause. I'm gonna give you some very practical ways you can do that today. Number one, if you're not part of a faith community that is passionate about loving God and loving people, then join a church today. Today, find a church in your community that is passionate about bringing hope and justice and being agents of reconciliation in the world and join that church. I invite you, if you're in St. Louis, you're not part of a church, come and join our church. I'm going to lead a membership class today at 1115 Central Standard Time. There's a Zoom link right below this video. Click the link at 1115 Central Standard Time. I'll be on there and I'll walk you through the steps of what it looks like to become a member of the family, to join with people who are like-minded, who are passionate about doing something to make a difference. Number two, join a life group. You cannot do this alone. You've got to be in community with other people. You've got to connect and care and grow together. The reality is if you join a life group at our church or many other churches, you're going to interact with people that, that you would not interact with under any other circumstances. If you come to our church or a life group in our church, you're going to meet people from different nationalities, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different cultures, and, and you're going to learn from one another. You're going to grow together. You're, you're going to be authentic with each other, and you're, and you're going to be transformed by that experience. That's where we grow spiritually. Number three, serve. Find a place to sacrifice your time, your energy, your talent, your abilities to serve somebody else to make a difference on the planet. If you need help, finding a place to serve, let us know. Put your name on a connection card. We will connect you with the ministries that we support. Uh, we'll send you information about ways that you can get plugged in and serve on one of our teams or serve one of our partner agencies uh, in, in a week uh, from Saturday. For instance, we're gonna be doing um, a drive where we're gathering hundreds of pounds of food for one of our partner agencies and supplies for our brothers at Stepping Into the Light. We'll invite you to do that. Uh, there are numerous ways to serve, but you gotta find a way to open your heart, open your life, and serve somebody else. Number four, give. 
sacrifice your resources, give to an organization that is making a difference on the planet. If you want to look at the organizations that we support, they're all vetted. We love them all. They're doing amazing work. You can support them. You can support One Family Church and, and, and help us spread the mission of reconciliation. But find an agency or an organization that you believe in that's making a difference, that's actually having an impact on the, on the planet, and give your resources to support the expansion of that ministry. Whatever you do, do not stop walking down the road to reconciliation. It, it might mean joining your local school board, uh, getting involved in local government, marching, uh, serving at your school, at your job, uh, being an ambassador for justice in your community or at your church. Don't let the fire die out. And finally, I want to end with the most important thing that I could say this whole time. The scripture says this in 2 Chronicles. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land. Today, I want to invite you to humble yourself before God and ask God to reconcile you to Him, to, to make you one with His people, and then to commission you and authorize you and commit you to the ministry of reconciliation. In fact, I'd ask wherever you are today, if you're able, in your home, on your couch, in your living room, in your bedroom, I would ask that you join me by bowing down before God, kneeling down before the Lord, humbling yourself, and asking God to commission you to be an ambassador for Christ. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we come before you and we ask God with open hearts, we ask God that you would reconcile us to you, take our sins from us, give us your righteousness, and let us become reconciled to you, made whole and complete in you, lacking nothing. God, I pray that you would make us one today. Uh, remove the false dichotomies, the false paradigms that the enemy has put in front of us and remind us that we are one. There is no Jew, nor Greek, no male, no female, no slave, no free. We're one in you. And Father God, I pray for myself and for every person that's watching this uh, sermon today. God, I pray that you would uh, commit them to the message of reconciliation, that you would make us ambassadors for you, that we would become your hands and feet on the planet. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would do this today. Do it in our hearts, in our minds, and in our bodies. Let us, Lord God, leave this sermon today changed fundamentally, transformed as we walk down the road to reconciliation. God, I pray that it is for the good of this world and I pray, Lord God, that it is for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.